Hello everyone, I have a lot in store for you in this video and to get us started, let's unbox this 8 inch Android head unit from Joying. This unit is running Android 10 with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of ROM. Then I'll show you how to install this on this 2014 Honda CRV, and finally I'll give it a DIY ability score. So the first thing we have here is the user's manual. Very thin, also has the connection diagram you can see there. And we have the, the actual LCD, the screen. As with most joining products, the screen is sort of not connected to the main body, the main brains or main computer of the head unit. Instead, you have a ribbon cable that you attach here and you have these four prongs to secure this into the head unit. So it's got slot for the hazard lights and holes for the aircon vent itself. Really good reflective screen there. And let's get rid of all these. You have here wiring harness. So this one has got the CAN bus decoder um, and some and connector there, an ISO connector, a rear view camera, and hopefully we'll be able to use all that. This uh, particular Honda CRV has built-in reverse camera, so hopefully that would work. The whole wiring harness would work. Two 4G antenna, so it's 8G. Got the GPS receiver. An extra plug, just in case it arrives broken. Um, they did pack it up pretty okay, so no issues there. External microphone. Um, USB cables, USB connectors, extension cables. So two, um, not as long as I would hope. It's very short, probably half a meter. Um, so we'll see how we'll use that. And finally, the brains. The brains behind. Okay, so this is the um, USB connector. Hopefully, I can be, I'll be able to use this. Um, so we'll see how that works out. So we have what looks like the SIM card holder there and an extra USB port there. I'm not sure what that is for. And a bunch of connectors. So that's it. We'll go into the car and start disassembling. So let's get this show on the road. We are sat inside this 2014 Honda CRV. So if I turn on the ignition and if you can see here, it says there warning, but then you can't do anything and that's the problem. Yep. So we're going to replace this with the joying head unit, which I got from AliExpress. To get started with this install, first thing you need to do is make sure there are no CDs inside the radio. So just check, make sure empty and then just note that these Honda car stereos have an anti-theft protection system and in your user manual you should have a five digit code similar to this so just keep it handy just in case you need to put it back in so first thing you need to do is to remove these aircon vents on either side and these are just held by three clips two on top and another one right here and the simplest way to do this is using this plastic pry tool make sure it's really sturdy and really thin at the edge like that so using this plastic pry tool just dig in there and what you want to do is pull this towards you um, there it is so you really need to get in there. Um, do the same thing on the other side there. So just slot it in there and 
and pull it straight out and then on this side the bottom clip normally comes off really easily and that just removes that vent for you do the same on the other side and pull it straight out pull it straight out if you're doing this for the first time you might encounter some resistance just make sure to use a really sturdy plastic pry tool like this not the really flimsy one because you really need a thin end to be able to insert that near where the clips are and then at the bottom again just that sort of comes off easily like so and then on either side of the stereo this is Phillips head screw I'm just going to use a ratchet type screwdriver to easily loosen them up The next step is to pull this stereo out this way. There are six clips holding this in place. They're really strong, two on each side and one at the middle, same as the, the one at the bottom. Best approach is to tackle one side at a time with both hands and then just pull it until you hear a click. There it is. There it is. And then at the bottom, it's a bit tricky. There it is. And then before you can pull this all the way out, you need to disconnect the wiring harness at the back. Okay, so that's the connector right there. There's a clip on top. Just press it down and pull it out. And then pull this out as far as you can go and behind this there are a lot of connectors which we need to unclip now this is what the back of the stereo looks like I've got eight connectors that I need to remove four on top one two three four and four at the bottom one two three there and for the big one so let's start with this black connector which is I think the radio so there's a clip on the side there it is most of these other connectors have a locking clip on the top so it's really easy just press and release press release press release these are the these I must admit this is probably the one of the easiest car stereos that I've removed now there's a locking clip that's hidden easiest to do is to just press and just so it's it's actually at the front here you can press push it down and and open that up um, but you can also press it from the top and then pull it out like so and then it will release and that's it next we'll need to remove this hazard light from the OEM head unit you need a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen the screw on either side Then let's go ahead and remove these two side brackets because this is what will hold the joint head unit in place inside the dashboard cavity. We also need to remove these white clips and transfer them onto the joint head unit. Now to do this, you will need a very small screwdriver to pry both sides of the clip and then lift it up like so. Now this step is optional so do this only if you want to salvage these red orange clips but as you will see later in this video these clips do not fit the joint head unit so we will not be using them.
Again, using two small screwdrivers or something similar, we need to pry out these three white clips from the aircon vent. Next, remove these three Phillips head screw using a screwdriver. And finally, using a small flat head screwdriver, pry out these two clips on either side. Notice there's a silver bezel around the inner perimeter. Just simply lift it out and transfer this onto the joining head unit. From here, it's just a matter of putting it all together. First, lay down the silver bezel. Then align the air vent on top of it and push it down until you hear it click. Then use the three Phillips head screw to secure it in place. Make sure to stagger the tightening of the screws so that the vent will sit nice and flush. I also noticed that the inner clip of the vent is missing. Then one by one, let's reattach all these white clips. Just slide that in. If you were like me and you removed the metal clips attached to the vent earlier, well, that step wasn't necessary. So now is a good time to reattach it. Okay, so that's what the vent looks like. Make sure you don't break any of the vent. You can still see the, the bezel right there. We retain that look. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. And this is what the screen and fascia kit looks like when both vents are connected. If you notice, there are actually fewer white clips mounted on the top part of the frame here because they got rid of three white clips, one clip from each aircon vent and one from the top middle section right where the hazard light is. And that leaves us with three extra white clips which we can now use for the bottom section because the red clips doesn't seem to fit here anymore. So in the end, you'll have three unused red clips. Next, let's go right ahead and attach this hazard light now. Make sure it's in the right orientation. For something so minor, this hazard light installation is giving me all sorts of problem. If you tighten it too much, the hazard light will sit at a wrong angle and it will rub against the fascia. So what I'm doing here is I loosen it up just a couple of notches and you can see here it's now moving freely. So there's a bit of a dilemma here. I thought this install was going to be a really straightforward, easy project, but I wasn't really expecting that I'll have issues with installing this head unit because of the hazard light. Now, if you can see, this is the standard stereo. Straight through, I can see there's a really good space behind this panel for the hazard light. You can see there's no blockage, but if I remove this, now if I put the joining stereo, now you can see right away that's straight into that plastic piece because this is positioned all the way to the top. So to make room for the hazard light, we're gonna have to saw that off and for us to be able to saw this off properly, we need to remove this plastic panel. Okay, let's, so let's start by removing this Phillips head screw. Put that aside. And then start from one side and then just tug, tug, tug it towards you. If you're doing this for the first time, it might be tougher than that. As you can see here, there's just one clip there. So three, oh actually three. So three clips at the bottom. And then three on top. And then you have these guiding pins. This is what we need to cut off. 
Now I don't think I need to cut this off. I think I might be just, I might get away with just sewing this off. I'm not sure whether all the way up to here, but I will do a trial and error, but I might be able to retain this plastic piece. So that's what it looks like. Um, so I've installed it temporarily without uh, a plastic piece here, but that's how much clearance I get. So it's basically almost touching this plastic piece, which means I don't need to cut this off. Okay, so I'm now back in the workshop and I've marked off the edge where I'm gonna cut off. I'm gonna try to retain this tab and sort of cut that line all the way across and basically get rid of this. So um, I have my rotary tool, make sure you have an eye protection and gloves. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm gonna just smoothen that out and we'll give it a try. Okay, so that's as smooth as I can get it. Okay, so that's what the plastic panel now looks like. The clip that was here is not needed because the new head unit doesn't have a clip in the middle. We're gonna put this back on and we'll continue with the installation. So I've just quickly tried that on. Looks like it's gonna clear, clear that piece. So that's that's a success. It's time to put this back on and then continue with the installation. So now it's just a matter of attaching the the brackets. So there's only two screw holes on the head unit. This angled side is closer to the front. Okay, so I have tried installing this in the car and I have concluded that this won't line up here when, um, when all these pins are also lined up. I'm unable to um, attach those prongs into those receptacles while those pins are mounted on the car. So since the screen is securely mounted on the, the fascia anyway, and that this main head unit is securely mounted using this brace. I don't really need these to attach to the screen, but since they're mounted separately, I'm gonna remove them just so that I don't have to align them as I mount them separately. So it was a bummer, but it makes the, um, the installation easy. There it is, nice and bare. So that um, simplifies the installation. I don't have to line it up. All I need to do is attach this ribbon cable and that's it. And so while we have this dashboard cavity open, um, including this part, I'm gonna take this opportunity to install the GPS receiver here. I've cleaned up that area with alcohol wipes and I also have attached a double-sided tape on the GPS itself. So I'm just going to mount it like this and I'm going to route the wire through there. And so I'm just going to fish this wire through. Nice and easy. 
a long GPS cable. Normally I'd put this on top of the dashboard, but I've seen people do it this way. So I've got that surface cleaned, so I'm gonna take off this adhesive backing, lining it all up. To make sure that it doesn't come off, I am okay, I'm just gonna press that for a couple of seconds. And I'm gonna put a silicon sealant on this side here, so on either side, so it has that extra adhesive. Because um, we don't want that to come off and bounce around. So, as you can see there, there's a dab of silicon sealant on either side just to keep it secure. Because over time, the double sided tape could lose its adhesiveness due to the heat. You know, this is directly under the sun. So, just an extra sort of added. That's a backup just to make sure that this doesn't um, come off. So, next is the microphone. Now, in terms of the location, there is a crevice just around there. I'm just gonna route that wire through here underneath the driver's side footwell and then onto the A pillar and then just above either just above that window or just behind this rear view mirror so maybe just behind here so where you see the light that's where I'm gonna route the the microphone so I'm gonna fish up this headphone jack um, from there um, so it stays here and then the microphone is on the other side so that's not a big not a difficult thing so lots of space there um, so I'll, um, I'll leave that there and um gonna route the end the other end of that wire through to the driver's side footwell okay so we're at the driver's side footwell and that's the microphone wire so this is the head unit side and this is the a pillar side i'm just gonna secure this wire in here just run a cable tie so I'm just gonna loosely attach that. At this point, I don't know how much slack I need to give it. We're gonna have to remove this because I'm gonna tuck this underneath. So I'm just um, turn that quarter, do a quarter turn, and there's a clip here. Also need to pull pull that. Uh, be careful. There's a wire uh, attached. So just um, don't yank it out and I'm just gonna tuck it underneath here loosely again there's um, places here which I can use to mount or secure this in place we don't want this to rattle around there's another point here or another anchor um, this brace here um, I'm just gonna again lightly attach this cable tie like I said I don't know how much slack I need to give it so I am just loosey, loosely doing that um, and I'm gonna tape that up later and then when we reach this point uh, just loosen up this weather, sheet, weather strip and just route that underneath and then route that up hide that in there so the microphone is now there and the wire strouted on the headliner here um, cross cross this a pillar top of the a pillar and then down here and then on the side there so now I know how much slack I have I'm gonna tighten those zip ties and the microphone wire is just right there dangling 
So now it's time to close up this weather strip. So we just push push it all in. Make sure it's all nice and snug. That's it. So now I'm ready to close it up, um, hook it all up and close it all off. So hopefully everything still works. Okay, so we're now closing up. I've got the GPS and the microphone connectors here in the dash cavity. Um, I've done some wire management, had all the um, excess GPS cables tucked underneath here wrapped it with some um, insulation foam so it doesn't rattle around so now we're going to return or reattach this plastic trim that goes above or to cover the small screen here so again there it is so it it lines up and then push push on one on either side until until you hear that click and then just uh, reattach this screw and that's it so top layer done okay so this is the final step so I will probably tidy this up later but I just need to check if everything is still working so this is the wiring harness that's provided by joying so I'm just gonna attach that onto the head unit and then we have this uh, USB connector so I'm just gonna do that um, I'm using the, the top one so the top one seemed to work with um, Android Auto CarPlay Android Auto so I'm um, gonna use that um, microphone microphone port goes in here um, and then the radio antenna goes here so now it's just really a matter of plugging in each connector there's so many connectors here it's good but we're actually too short on the car side I've got four five six seven and on the head unit side I I only have five so there are actually two missing connectors I have emailed the seller asking them well what am I missing just hook up the main harness just line it up and then and then that sort of slides back to lock in place now you can't really mix them it goes only on one spot so this one looks like goes in there so that one looks like for that not really for this that one looks like it's for that this one that's the radio so I where's the radio the radio is here somewhere I saw it here it is so the radio goes here I'll probably route it all the way to the other side there there it is and I've got two plugs that are not connected finally uh, the GPS antenna so just um just that one gold uh, screw there and then uh, tidy this up I want to test if everything works so I'm gonna mount this we're just going to attach the head unit um, screen um, there it is and the hazard light 
Yep, still working. And then I have the key with me. I'm gonna turn that on. So it still works. That's the radio. So that's the shortcut. That's the CarPlay or CarLink, CarLink it app, which um, emulates CarPlay or Android Auto radio. Okay, that's the work. Home. Yep. Settings. Device. Oh, system. Let's see. Uh, device info. Nope, not that one. About device. So this one is <coughs> Android 10 with octa core, 2 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes RAM, and 64 gigabytes of ROM, which is what I've ordered. So looks like everything is in order. I'm going to Let's turn on the engine and test the reverse camera. Okay, car is starting. Um, I'm gonna put the car in reverse. Camera is there, including the sensor. So car is now in reverse um, put that in park it goes back into the main screen put it in reverse I've got the trajectory line um, that doesn't follow the, the steering wheel input so it's not moving but I've got sensors let's see if that would, would work See if I have sensor. So I'm just backing out from my garage. Let's see if the sensor will pick up um, the the distance. It's quite glary. Let's see if that. Not really. No, it doesn't project the screen but um, I can see the the warning um, on the top screen there is showing up um, so I'm going to figure out why might be some canvas settings there but it looks like I should be able to close this up so this is the neatest I can do with this wiring harness. I spent some time to cover the major wires with a foam insulation just to minimize the possibility of any rattling because that could be annoying. Especially with a CAN bus decoder, we don't want it to bang against the plastic trim while you're cruising on the freeway. And notice I've also connected the two USB cables and terminated it inside the glove box. So we'll have two extra USB ports for charging other devices from uh, passengers. So I think it's about time to close it all up because I'm pretty happy with this wire management. And by the way, as you can see here, I had the angled side of the brace closer to the front. This is so the front of this metal enclosure is as far back from the LCD as possible so they don't touch each other. So I'm just going to push down all these wires towards the back because there are more spaces there. Then let's go ahead and screw this bracket on. So I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and bring the screen close so we can line up the ribbon cable with a clamp on the LCD screen. Make sure these two clamps on both sides are in the open position like this. Then once both sides are aligned, close the clamp one side at a time so it grabs the end and lock it in place. Next, let's connect the hazard light switch. Then test if it's working. It's working, that's good. And it's time to close it up. 
Before I close this up, I went ahead and tested the boot up speed of this head unit from a hard boot. So as reference, this head unit has an 8 core CPU with 4 gigabytes of ROM and 64 gigabytes of RAM and it clocks in at 38.1 seconds. Okay, happy with that. I'm going to turn it off and push this in. So now let's measure how long it takes to do a soft boot. So that clocks in just over 5 seconds, which is I think a bit too slow. I remember I installed an Android based head unit for a BMW X5 E53 roughly about 4 or 5 years ago and it took 2 seconds to do a soft boot. And now I'm going to give this project a DIY ability score. This is the part where I rate the work I've done by judging it across five categories. Each category can get a score between 1 and 10, so the maximum score any of my DIY project can get is 50. Starting with affordability, the joint brand in general is on the expensive side of the scale because it's a well-known brand and it makes a relatively good quality head unit. Based on my research, the price spread for an equivalent spec head unit is between 330 to 820, which puts the 8-inch join head unit at the bottom half of the pack. So this project gets an affordability score of 4 out of 10. Moving on to quality, overall I'm happy with the quality of this head unit. I was pleasantly surprised that the reverse camera is hooked up on the wiring harness correctly. I was super happy to see the reverse camera video feed show up on the screen when I put the car in reverse gear. Also, it's nice they provided an adapter for the OEM USB port on the armrest. This saves me the effort of installing an aftermarket USB and I'm glad because this is a time consuming process and I'm happy to avoid it. However, it's not all that perfect. There are two issues that I would just like to point out to potential DIYers. First one is the missing two connectors in the harness, which cause the steering wheel buttons inoperative. The car has seven connectors, but the wiring only has provision for five. The good thing here is that at the time of filming this video, I've been in touch with the joining staff. They have identified that they might need to provide me with a new canvas unit at no extra cost. Second item is the hazard light not sitting flush when the screws are tight. So it looks like there's a potential design issue there. Fortunately, both these issues can be rectified, so I'm giving this project an 8 out of 10 for quality. Next up is satisfaction. Normally, I don't factor in the buying experience because things just happen in that area. You order the product you want to buy, 2-3 to three weeks later, it appears in your doorstep. Not so the case for this one. I didn't have a good buying experience because seller tried to dupe me into getting the bigger screen head unit and lied about the 8 inch screen not available in stock even though I was able to place an order online. You know, After buying the 8 inch screen, a few hours later, I got a message from the seller trying to upsell me the head unit with the larger screen. There was also an issue with delivery. It was rejected by the customs here in Australia because the seller didn't fill out the forms correctly, which means I had to wait twice the amount of time before I can get my hands on this product. The only saving grace in all this from a satisfaction point of view is how much the owner of this car loved the head unit. They're very happy. It's everything they expected. Um, it's also nice to see both wireless and wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto working in person because the couple who drives this car had an iPhone and an Android phone. So that's neat. So all these things considered, I'm giving this project an 8 out of 10. Next, we have fit and finish. From a functionality point of view, the joying head unit performs really well with its octa-core CPU and beefed up memory and storage. However, when it comes to how well it fits in the cabin, that's where it fails to deliver. First, there's this issue of the internal screen and fascia mounting clips not being aligned. Then of course we also have the hazard light issue. And lastly, I received feedback from the owner that the airflow on the center vents have slightly decreased after the installation. Maybe there are some alignment issues there as well. All these three issues are not deal breakers for me because they're all easily fixable 
but ideally to receive a score of 10 in this category, it has to be really plug and play. So with all these things considered, this project gets a 7 out of 10 in this category. And last but certainly not the least, fun factor. I thoroughly enjoyed this project. The overall disassembly of the OEM head unit was really super simple. If it was a German car that I've been working with, I would have probably removed 10 screws by now, accidentally dropped one inside the dashboard cavity, removed all the dashboard panels just to remove the stereo. But alas, this is a Honda CRV, and all I needed to do was unclip two aircon vents, remove two bolts, unclip a bunch of connectors. It couldn't be any simpler than that. It also had a good amount of challenging steps, as in the case of the hazard light, but they're not insurmountable, as long as you have the right tools though. This project is definitely doable within one day or within a weekend. So I'm giving this project a 9 out of 10 for fun factor. And this gives this DIY project a total DIY ability score of 36 out of 50, which puts it in equal 7th place along with another head unit upgrade I did for the BMW X5 E53. Make sure to check it out too. And that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below or write me an email at autos.gizmos at gmail.com. And finally, if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. This will help YouTube improve their algorithm, making this video become available to other like-minded individuals and at the same time, helping me grow this channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.